things coming out. We're going to talk about securing Amazon S3, red team exploits, and blue team defenses. I'm Nick Gilbert. I'm the lead security engineer at FICO, and I'm also an AWS community builder on their security and identity team. And you may have seen me previously on AWS On Air doing talks about pen testing and red teaming. So today's agenda is red team versus blue team, Amazon S3 security, types of encryption for S3, a red team tactic to access S3, and privilege escalation using a cloud boot hook, blue team defenses, and how to catch the red team's attack and protection to block it. So the difference between the red team and the blue team is the red team has a specific goal, for example, to get crown jewel data from S3 using stealth techniques to avoid detection. The blue team is the opposite. Their goal is to detect and stop the red team. So in S3, there's a few different types of encryption. No encryption is no longer possible, so the default one is an Amazon S3 managed key. Then it is a AWS managed KMS key. Then customer managed key, customer provided key. And the newest one is a dual layer KMS key. So the first three are not very secure. So you definitely want to use one of the last three. And the one I use the most is the middle one, customer managed KMS key. And you could go one step further to make that even more secure by disabling IAM permissions on the KMS key and also implementing separation of duties. So in a KMS key, in the resource policy, by default, it has this statement, uh, which allows IAM permissions for KMS. If you remove that, then all permissions have to go through the KMS key resource policy. For separation of duties, you have a key administrator and then a key user. So the administrator can create the key, manage the policy, but they can't use the key. And you have a key user, which is the opposite. They can't create or manage the key, but they could use the key. This is what the policy looks like. So on the left, you have the administrator, and on the right, you have the user. So why is protecting the key important? Without the key, you can't get any data from S3. However, if the user was able to escalate their privilege, then they have KMS access and can get to files in S3. However, with the KMS resource policy, even as full admin, you can't access data in S3 because you're blocked by the resource policy. Now we'll take a look at a red team tactic. So if we want to get a file from S3, we'll have to move laterally to a role that could download the file and decrypt it. So in red team, we also start, often start with an assumed breach scenario. So we're going to assume the role of a junior system admin. It's only going to have three permissions, all related to EC2, start and stop instances, and then modify instance attribute. So no S3 permissions, no KMS permissions. This is the user. Here's the policy. And our target is going to be this flag inside the S3 blue team bucket. And it's encrypted with dual layer encryption. So in order to get that, we have to move to a role which has permissions to access that bucket. So there's an EC2 instance that has a role, blue team S3 bucket role. So if we check the command line, we're currently the junior system admin. If we try to get that file, it's access denied. So what we're going to do is stop that instance. Now we're going to set up a listener. So this is just a Python 1 list. Python uh, listening on port 443. That's like a red team command and control server. And we're going to modify the user data. Normally, the user data is only run once when the instance first launches. 
However, if you add this cloud boot hook directive, it's run every time, uh, every time you start and stop or reboot an instance. So by adding that, you could run code from the user data. And this code specifically gets the temporary credentials from the EC2 instance and then sends them back to the listener. So we modify the instance attribute. Uh, then we start the instance back up. And if we go back to our listener, we see the keys are sent to the listener. So this is the temporary role that the EC2 was using. So we decode them because they're in base64. And then export them. And if we check which user we are now, we're the role of the EC2 instance. And we can now get the file from S3. So now let's talk about the blue team side of thing. How do we block this? So uh, in Amazon S3, there are a number of AWS config rules built in. So there's nine that I like to use for S3. And if you look at the first one, it's S3 default KMS encryption. One of the first slides was the uh, S3 default encryption. Uh, with this rule, it marks the bucket as non-compliant if you're using that type of encryption. I also like to use uh, a custom config rule backed by Lambda. And the way this works is it marks it non-compliant if the default encryption is used, if an Amazon S3 key is used, if IAM permissions are enabled on the KMS policy, and also if separation of duties are not implemented. So when this runs, if all checks pass, then it marks the bucket as compliant. Or if it's non-compliant, then it'll add an annotation telling you why it's not compliant. For example, I am permissions enabled or key policy doesn't have separation of duties. Another thing you could do is use event bridge to detect changes to the user data. That's not something that would typically change, so setting up an alert and event bridge for it is a good idea. And then that could be backed by a Lambda function, which could do automation such as revoke sessions, stop or quarantine an instance, restore the user data, or block the principal that did it. So in event bridge, you can't do an event for user data, so you have to do modify instance attribute, and then use Lambda to see if it was user data that was changed. This is what the flow looks like. So you have an admin that modifies the user data on an EC2 instance, which uh, the API calls log to CloudTrail, which triggers event bridge, which triggers a Lambda to run your automation. Another thing you could do is with a VPC endpoint for S3 and using a S3 bucket resource policy. So in our scenario, we have the user that used the EC2 credentials to access the file from S3, and these were used remotely because they were exported. However, with a VPC endpoint and bucket resource policy, even if you have the credentials, you wouldn't be able to get the file from S3. This is what the policy looks like. So it's a deny on get input object if the VPC endpoint ID is not from the one you specify. So to summarize, we talked about security for AWS KMS, different types of encryption for S3, AWS config S3 roles, event bridge for automation, and securing S3 with a VPC endpoint and resource policy. Thanks for attending. My LinkedIn is up there. Uh, please complete the survey in the app.